Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another InfoSec Hub video. Today we're going to talk about PF Blocker, the firewall functionality within uh, PFSense. Um, this is a fresh installation and you already see a firewall here. Uh, but if you want extended functionality, you should go for um, PF Blocker. First, let's go in here, the firewall, what uh, what's, uh, comes out of the box, NAT which is network address translation. Let's say for instance, you have a game server running or a VoIP server or uh, anything like that. Uh, you need port forwarding. So when you get uh, calls coming from the internet to your server, uh, you can specify here that if a certain request comes in on the WAN interface, it should be directed to the LAN interface to a certain um, uh, IP address of the internal server on your network. Um, a certain port number and stuff like that you can set it up here uh, rules has to do with firewall rules this is what you set up already um, during the installation of pfsense you uh, block these networks so on the WAN port we already have these rules set up on the LAN port we have these rules set up anti-lockout rule so you're not locking out yourself to this uh, web configurator default allow LAN in any rule Open VPN, we set one rule, non-schedule, floating rules, no floating rules are currently uh, defined. And floating rules can, you know, be for either one, LAN or both. But let's go to the package manager and we go to PF blocker. I think there should be version 3.0 there right now. Let's see. PF blocker. We go for the PF blocker ng devil install. So version 3.1 and not 2.1. So this is a different kind of version that I want to review with you guys. So this will take a while again. Uh, it will install PF blocker as a package and uh, then we go over that uh, together. PF blocker is basically the function that you want to set up. That's the reason that you uh, have PFSense in the first place. Because PFSense sits at the edge of your network. It has a WAN and LAN interface, so it sits at the edge. And you want to have a firewall. This is in the basis. PFSense started out as an open source firewall. And we have all these different kind of packages that came available uh, over the years. But the uh, PF blocker that's the firewall that's exactly the one that you want and that what you need so now you can see that the pfsense pf blocker ng package has been uh, successfully installed uh, we go right into it and here is the pf blocker ng and this is the, um, the wizard. So we'll go to this together. Uh, and you can always go back to the wizard at a later time. So maybe you messed uh, some settings up and things are not running no more. You can go back to this wizard and it will uh, automatically delete all the previous settings. So you start with a clean slate basically. So next. Select inbound firewall interface. Inbound is WAN and outbound is LAN. It's already set here by uh, default, but just know that inbound is coming from the internet, which goes to the WAN. Outbound is the LAN going to the internet. So that's from local area network to the internet. This is from the internet WAN going to the LAN. Inbound WAN, outbound LAN. Next. VIP address. So this has to do, you can set this up. Here you see different IP range. Uh, and this also has to do with the DNS settings. So we leave this default right now because I'm not using this 10, 10, 10, 1 range anyway. We keep the port default, the SSL port default, and we use this whitelist. Um, next, finish. 
with this we basically set up uh, PF blocker ng. Uh, so let's give this a sec. Now all these changes will be applied to the firewall. Okay, here we are. Um, the firewall works on rule sets as well. Uh, and here, status next, schedule cron, event will run at, time remaining. Okay, now it's grabbing information, it's grabbing rule sets. Um, select force option update, reload. We're gonna set it at reload, so this means that it will reload all the list using the existing download files. This is useful for where lists are out of sync, whitelisting, blacklisting, sus suppression, TDL. Uh, it means that um, every time there's an update, then it will reload the whole list. So um, it forces the new rules onto the firewall, basically. All right, so... It's still downloading, so it's grabbing all the information. Here you see GUIP process. Uh, GUIP is interesting. Uh, let's say, for instance, that uh, you have a web server and you are under attack. Uh, and these attacks are usually coming out of one or two or three countries. You can block the entire range of that country, the, the, the whole IP block of that country that's assigned to that country, you can block it. That's GUIP, so it's quite uh, it's quite good. It's quite a powerful option. So when these new firewall rules are downloading in the back, I will show you the uh, dashboard again. Here you have the firewall logs, and now it doesn't really show any really real IP, IP addresses because this is on a virtual machine. And you see the PF blocker. So you see here already like, uh, a set of rules, uh, 18,650 rules, and this is the basic rule set. You ha can have various aliases, right? Uh, so you can have, uh, for instance, uh, Europe, Asia, America, uh, also when it comes to GOIP, if you use that, and you see all these rule sets that are here in place, and then you can see the kind of packets that went through there and that were blocked, for instance. Okay, you see, download fail, so it failed to download these. But we'll go back to that. It has maybe something to do with the fact... Yeah, it, it should download anyway. Let's continue. So we go to the general tab. Uh, PF blocker must be enabled. Uh, um, keep these settings. So keep settings enabled. PF blocker will maintain the run state of installation. Uh, okay, here you can set some log settings, so to make sure that the logs are not getting too big. And here, if you have the time, if you have the appreciation, you can donate to BBScan who made this uh, plugin. Because this is the devil plugin and not the general PF blocker NG uh, one. This one is a little bit more extensive. Uh, so, IP, alright, the IP tab. Uh, let's see, we have here inbound, outbound, so that's all good. We can enable floating rules so that the rules apply both for WAN and LAN. Um, and we can hit kill states here. So that means that when, you know, you have a connection open uh, from your device to a certain IP on the internet, for instance, and a new um, a new rule set is downloaded, then the connection will be uh, interrupted, right? So those new 
firewall rules will be applied and that also means that the device that is connected at that moment that connection will be interrupted so the new rules over override all active connections basically all right um guip we talked about this so max mind now requ requires a license key uh, yeah, go look it up. The uh, GUIP database for all the country blocks that I talked about earlier. Uh, you need a license key. Um, and I would set up Asia. Uh, I would set up Africa. Um, they even have one from Antarctica. <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh, top spammer should, should get. So you get new rule sets. Um, uh, they they can be downloaded like um, every six hours, every twenty four hours, depending on your uh, preferences. But you need a you need a license key for this if you want to use GIP. And I explained about what GIP is. IPv four. Um, here it says deny outbound. That's kind of um, uh, the default setting, but you can deny both or. Uh, you know whatever you want but just keep it like this uh basically the settings that you see right now um would be enough for an office uh, environment uh so what you saw earlier about installing this uh, package and then downloading the rule sets which apparently i have a little bit trouble finding them because it's still updating and i didn't see anything happening they say the update process ended. Uh, but but here you get IT table uh, downloads. Uh, it's all in a text file. Let's see if I can show you that. Uh, Spam house. If you're familiar with that, they also keep... Uh, well, let me just show you. Why not? Spam house. All right. What is Spam house, for instance? They... Uh, maintain block lists of well-known ips and domain names that are attached to cybercrime um, those kind of things and like just like snort in the previous video it's all based on a wide community uh, and they they feed the firewall and they feed uh, the snort which is the ids and the ips it's all based on these tx txt files full of rules Okay, let's back out of here. Reports, sync, logs. Logs are important. You want firewall logs. Log files, master file, original IP files, log files, IP block logs. It will log does not exist. Uh, you can download them, uh, whatever you want to do. So you can download logging from your machine and then probably with Notepad++, you can go over certain IPs. You can see what's going on on your network, what is being blocked and uh, what not. All right. What else can I show you? Reports, some filtering, feeds. Emerging threats, Internet Storm Center, Security Mass Scan, Project Honeypot. You can bot free, bot free cybercrime, dark list. You can add them, right? This is adding, add. All right, so this is nice. You can you can add here also the spam house. It's already added here. The feed exists. But if you have, for instance, this is bot free in Dutch, cybercrime, something, Internet Storm Center. I'm not really familiar with those. But you can add them to the list. Darklist.de. Add them to the list. All right. Uh, auto, GUIP, who is? Add. reputation okay that's not found we go back uh general tab again we've been there i'm sorry ip placeholder ip address 
yeah, this is basically it. You see, I do have internet connection here because there's an update available. It, it grabbed it over the internet. There is some traffic flowing through here. So I still think it's uh, it's wanting to download these uh, rule sets. But um, yeah, I can't really show you that. But out of the box, when you set it up and you go to the wizard and it downloads uh, the basic rule sets and you click finish, uh, then it's already installed. You can use it, but you can add additional block lists. You can add GUIP. So for instance, Ukraine or uh, Iran or, or some countries in Africa where known spammers are coming from, um, uh, hackers coming out of uh, Eastern Europe or North Korea, China, no matter what, you can block the entire country based on GUIP. It's effective, but not super effective because those hackers will probably use an anonymizing service or a VPN service. So they, it looks like they're coming out of another country. But a lot of like automated bots, scripts that run um, against your WAN interface will be blocked on IP basis also. So it's a very, uh, very nice package um you have a lot of options and again if you mess up at the end of the day it doesn't work no more you can go back to the wizard and if you complete this wizard then you have um an entry level configuration that's what they say here but actually um for most users that would be uh, sufficient so hope this makes sense to you uh, if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below this video i want to thank you for sticking around this long and uh, going to the end of this video i uh, hope it was useful and uh, we hope to see you guys in the next one thanks for watching